Did you just post about coffee? I did. Okay. Because now I'm getting all these notifications. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you should mute that. I'm going to turn that down. Crime Crazy, the weekly true crime podcast with Erin Klein and Jordan Middleton. <laughs> I was trying to go to sleep on the couch. No. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can join us each week as we prove that we know pretty much nothing about the legal system, but we're really crazy for a good true crime story. You said that so much better than me. I wrote it. Well, there you go. <laughs> Whatever, Erin. I learned from your mistakes. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, damn it. Okay, so earlier this week, I was like, I have a new question. Oh, oh I remember it. Oh, great. Okay, I'm nervous. Who, who came up with this? Was it, it might have been my mom. Oh, number one fan. I, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's our new question. Okay. okay. What crime didn't you choose this week? Murder. Flat out. No, I mean like specific crime. Like, what, what did you <laughs> look like at? I'm thinking like... What did you read about? And then you were like, nope, not going to do that one. Oh, you I thought to... you meant, like, what crime did I choose not to commit no. this week? <laughs> That's why I said murder. <laughs> Every day I'm like, I think I could just... Mike and I had a very in-depth conversation <laughs> about, like, what causes I would murder him on, I guess. Oh, my God. So I was like, well, there's only, like, a few. So, I mean, we should be fine. <laughs> but Wow. Um, I did look up one, and I was like, ew, no, I don't want to do this. And I, like, totally shut it down. But, uh, but I might use it. It was, like, abduction. Okay. But, I don't know, I feel like it's just, like, too talked about right now. So I'm going to oh, wait. Oh, it's, like, a popular one. Okay. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. So wait until there's all the evidence. The, yeah. The hardest ones are the ones that are recent or current. Yeah. Well, you have to wait at least a year, from what I'm realizing, for right. things to be released. Right. Which and even be. then, they haven't made it through all the court stuff. Oh, no. Mm, definitely not. It's not It's not finalized. What about you? Um, so I didn't, again, I didn't do my forager who's not a forager one. Oh, right. Um, I, it's very cool. I've written it all up. It's in my, like, crime book. It's ready to go. But I just keep getting excited about new ones. I do want to hear that one, so. I, it's really neat. It's, uh, it's, um... It doesn't technically count as true crime hmm. because there's not technically a crime involved. But he does get okay. arrested, and so I figured that counts. Yeah. No, that's fine. It's still it's still kind of crime. Well, then just keep that one for like a really busy week where you don't have time to research a new yeah. one, and then you have one in your back pocket. I have several. I because do, I keep but I don't. Finding new ones that I like. Like I'll save them. But I won't research them. So I'll, I'll like the one article I see, but I won't try to find more information about it. So right. that's kind of like what happened. And I was like, oh, I want to do this one. And I was like, no, I don't. Not yet. <laughs> so, oh. how was your week? Um, You didn't commit murder. That's good. Yeah. No, I didn't. I'm very proud of myself. Um, It was, I mean, it was fine. It's just been, it's just been a week so far. <laughs> It's so rainy. It's only Tuesday, and I feel like it's got to be Friday, and it's just pouring rain. I feel like there's a gift that's like, <laughs> it's been such a long week, and it's like, it's only Tuesday. <laughs> like, and that's what I feel like. everybody cries. Yeah, I was like, I feel like that. But. Our power flickered at school today, and it shut off the air conditioner, which was the first horrible thing, because it was so humid. It wasn't mm -hmm. hot. It was just so sticky so, inside. Yeah. And then it apparently, like, shut off everybody's projectors, and then they were really grouchy about coming back on. So mm. then I was, done, you know, like, bouncing from room to room, trying to get everybody set again. And... Oh, our power flickered today, but I'm sure that was completely unrelated to the schools. So here we are, bad-mouthing the dogs, and... Because I didn't feed her. 
The cat is yelling I, at me. She has so much food in there because her food came from Amazon <gasps> today. Pets. Which, by the way, if you have pets, best thing... Well, maybe not your pets because they eat um, a lot. Are you kidding me? That sounds great. So that means my ass doesn't have to go to the store and lug 30 or 60 pounds on my shoulders and carry it to the front. Well, I don't know about the larger size bags because I feel like maybe they would compensate for like shipping costs or whatever. Yeah. But the one that I bought cost exactly the same on Amazon as it does yeah. at like Walmart. Well, so it's like, the well, lady yes, I used to work for... To who had the four really big dogs? Yeah, she got her food shipped right to her. Yeah, like it's way like better. Bags at a time, so it wasn't just one bag. It was like six bags. So maybe yeah. every two or three months, she'd have to get another one. But right, that would be totally worth it. My mom has decided that she's gonna do um, every like twice a month, so every two weeks or so, okay. it's just gonna automatically ship to her house. Oh yeah, there's a and website that does that. Yeah, and she's just going to do it with Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Um, I decided that I was going to do it more like a dash button, although I didn't order the dash button, but I can mm-hmm. just tell that A-L-E-X-A over there <laughs> who is listening um, to order a new one, and she'll just order it. I need to set mine up to do that then. Yeah. Once they're on solid food that they like. Right. Well, I'm excited to hear your stories today. Okay. Well, I'm excited to tell my story today. So, uh, background first. So, Michelle that I was talking about last, that I gave a yeah. shout out to at the end of the last podcast, um, came up with this idea that I should do one about teachers who just snap and commit crimes, but not like, me. yeah, it's every, <laughs> every teacher's dream. No. Or nightmare. I don't worry. Mm. I'm not really sure, but not like traditional. Like if you read about a teacher who's committed a crime in the newspaper, it's always the same crimes, right? It's always mm. like an inappropriate relationship with a minor or, yeah. um, I don't know, bubbling SOLs, <laughs> the wrong way, state tests. Um, so I looked up teachers who are also criminals, and the story I have isn't actually, it's not like teaching drove this person to do this necessarily. Okay. Um, it just happens to be a teacher and a principal um, uh. <laughs> who were criminals. Okay. So... Um, so teacher and principal meaning two different people? Yes. Oh, okay. I was yes. like, is there a shortage and the principal had to start teaching a class? Like, what? All right. So here's mine. It's called the Mainline Murders. That was the name the press gave it. It happened in 1979 in June. Okay. Okay. So here are the characters in our story. So we have Susan Reinert and her two kids who are 10 and 11. Mm-hmm. We have her fiancé, Brad, or, yeah, Bradfield. And we have their principal, um, and I didn't actually... Oh, yeah, Principal Smith. Generic as fuck. It is. Go ahead. (laughs) But here's what they... Somebody described him. They said he looked like an obscene phone call. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously sketchy Smith is what we're going to call him. (laughs) Yeah. All right, so... That's funny. Susan Reiner is a teacher. Um, Her fiancé, Bradfield, is also a teacher. Is his name Brad... Field. No, that's his last name. Is oh, I'm so thinking, like, is his name Brad Field? Like, that's no, kind that's of funny. kind of awesome <laughs> if it was, but it's not. It's just Bradfield. Yeah, apparently I didn't actually write down either of those But a lot of articles don't name. do first and last, or they'll do it one time, and then the rest of the time they'll just refer it to last name. Yeah, So I was end up forgetting first names anyways. Yeah. So that's fine. All right, Continue. so he's, <laughs> he's a teacher. I'm pretty sure he's an English teacher. And then... Seriously Sketchy Smith is mm-hmm. the principal. So, seriously... <laughs> you set yourself up. I really did. Okay, so Smith. So, June 22nd, Susan Reiner and her two kids get into their car. And that is the last time anybody ever sees them alive. And it is the last time anybody ever sees the kids, period. To oh this my day. God. Nobody's ever found the kids. Ew, I already don't like this story, but continue. <laughs> okay. I need to know. Um... A couple days later, uh, I think three days later, her body was found in the back of her own car. It was tucked in, like, the trunk in, like, the wheel well area. She was naked. Oh, my God. It was parked at a really seedy motel. So, a little background on Susan. She's a 36-year-old divorcee. So, she's a single mom. Um, She was madly in love, engaged to Bradfield, who was another teacher at her school. 
Okay. They were planning on getting married that summer. So it's already summer. It's June 22nd. And yeah. it, so later that summer, they're supposed to get married in a European wedding. They're going to fly to Europe and have oh, like God. a yeah, on location kind of wedding. Um, she was madly in love with him. Her world was just perfect. Mm-hmm. So she puts her kids in her car and they're just going somewhere. Like they're, she's not running from anybody. They just were going to the store or whatever. Okay. And disappears. Um, when they found her naked in the trunk, bound, her, uh, she had bruises all over her, her hands mm. were bound, she had a lethal dose of morphine in her system. God. And at first, they just sort of, they didn't write it off, but they just sort of said, okay, this is like just a, an abduction, um, murder, like, there doesn't seem to be any reason to kill this specific person, it may have been a crime of opportunity or whatever mm-hmm. else. But then, um... A little while later, Bradfield, who's the fiancé, comes forward to collect the insurance policy, (laughs) and that's when they start to get suspicious. So, the insurance policy was $730,000. Dang, that's a really good life insurance policy, let me tell you. (laughs) Well, and so for whatever reason, one of the articles I was reading... (laughs) Thought that this would be another way to think about it. $7,000 per pound of Susan. Oh my god. So she's insured for $7,000. Jeez. Which, if that's how we insured people, then I'd be in danger of being murdered. I tell you what, I wish that was the way, but there is no way. I'm really glad that's not the way to it. So they go and they question Bradfield, but it turns out he has a pretty airtight alibi because he was at a beach in New Jersey with other colleagues. Like they were having like a faculty outing. Like I know the school that I used to work with, they plan, I think usually at the very beginning of summer, they rent a house in North Carolina and they all go down there and it's like, let's spend some time together because we actually like each other and we're like the only adults we ever see, Mm -hmm. Um, but with no school. So it's just like a... You know, like a Where did this all vacation. take place? Close to New Jersey, or was it like a? I, my only thing is, is like, okay, no, if it's a tri-state area, that. whatever. He probably could just go to Jersey to the beach, whatever. But if it's like Georgia, and he randomly is it in New Jersey at the beach, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, no, um, I don't know where it was, but it doesn't. It doesn't really matter for alibi reasons because the colleagues that were there were like, no, he was there the whole time. He never oh. left. It's not like he All could right. have driven somewhere and killed her and, and come back. back. Like he okay. absolutely had an alibi. Okay. So then, for some reason, they start looking into the principal of the school. Weird. Which seems like a very strange leap to make, except seriously sketchy Principal Smith. Mm-hmm. I said it right that time. Yep. <laughs> He's the worst boss Ever. Okay, he... Um, Ever? Uh, well... In the se- 1979? <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's probably not the worst boss ever. But he is a terrible boss. Okay. And he scares everybody. And people were afraid to go to him. Like, the faculty was afraid of him. And the students were afraid of him. And the community was afraid of him. And, like, Ew. the one person said he looked like an obscene phone call. Which I think is the best. I think I'm going like, to start using that right? on a daily basis. <laughs> I know some people who definitely look like an obscene <laughs> phone call. Um, and I actually did put a picture of him. I'll post it on Instagram when we post this, okay. this episode. Uh, I feel like... Of the two men, Bradfield and Smith, that the seriously sketchy, obscene phone call principal guy is the lesser scary hmm. one. I thought Bradfield was kind of terrifying looking. Ugh. So I need to see now. He's sort of in that fine line of he could be maybe handsome and charming to a certain group of women. Mm. Um but you look at him and you're like, yeah, he was a serial killer. Like, he just oh. looks like that. <laughs> yeah. We used to play this game when we were people watching, like, oh, yeah, that person has someone locked in their basement. Oh, yeah. And, like, it would always freak us out because then we're like, oh, my God, what if they do? And we're just joking around about it. <laughs> right. Right now, somebody's feeling, dying yeah, in their basement. feeling really guilty. Lila, go to your bed. Go to your box. Go find your dad. Go away. 
Anyway, the other thing about this boss, other than looking like an obscene phone call and being the worst boss and being scary, Mm -hmm. is that he was caught robbing a Sears dressed as a security guard. Oh, my God. And Bradfield, the teacher, was, and the fiancé of the missing woman that turned up dead, was a witness, an alibi witness for him at his trial. He went to the trial and he said, oh, no, he couldn't have done it. He was with me at the time or whatever. Like, I know where he was. Well, the jury didn't believe him because he was lying, and they convicted Principal Smith anyway. Uh, Um, And really nobody believed him. Even his fiance didn't believe him. Oh, my God. (laughs) She's like, yeah, that's not not right. So it was sort of more like Bradfield was trying to do a favor Uh for Smith and and get him out of trouble, um, even though he was clearly guilty. I was saying there there was an under the table arrangement there. There was some some sort of arrangement there. So the police found it really suspicious because Bradfield had lied at the trial of Principal Smith. Bradfield has an alibi but like now these two are sort of associated in criminal behavior Mm -hmm. so it's already a little suspicious and then it turns out that Smith also had a court date on the 25th which was the morning that they found her in her trunk, Reiner in her trunk, um, and he was late to his court date. Mm. So, and the body was discovered really close, the hotel was really close to the courthouse where he had to appear for court. So he killed her, shoved her in the trunk, naked, and just shut the trunk and was like, all right, better get to court. I guess so. I swear. Gotta show up for this other crime. That's probably why it was like lethal injection or like or whatever it was. Right, morphine, with the morphine right. But it, it wasn't bloody. So Well, but she was also right, so he didn't have yeah. to change his clothes or whatever. But she was also tied up and bruised, like she'd been tortured too. So yeah. he spent some time well, he'd had her for if if he's if the he, one that yeah. did it, he'd had her for three days. Yeah. So he was probably like, Alright, I gotta get out of here. Right. Right. His weekend was up or whatever. I just And then he just drops her on the way. I guess maybe he thought, I have a court date at this time, and and so this will be a really good alibi, and they won't know exactly when I dropped her off. Like, clearly these two men are not criminal masterminds. Um, So the school falls apart. Oh, actually, here, let me go back. So there's more evidence. Uh, In the back, in the trunk with the body, they also found a comb that had Smith's Army Reserve unit written on it. Oh. So, like, it was stamped with his unit. I hate stupid people. Right. I hate stupid criminals more. Right, right. It's like, let me just leave, accidentally leave, one thing that can definitely be a link to only me right. and the suspects. Like, right. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm, like, getting mad. <laughs> <laughs> I always am getting so pissed off, but... <laughs> Uh, I like that this time you're getting mad at the at the uh, criminal. I know. Well, I, that's scaring me because I feel like in the back of my head I'm like I could have did that better. I know. And I'm like, oh I my know. god, wait, oh my god, no, I would never. Right. Well, but that's the thing. We we wouldn't ever do any of these things. No, but, but I love watching that show. That's like stupid criminals, like the guy who robbed the store and had his like over, like his coveralls on that had his name his tag name. like. Really? Yeah. Like, come on. Or the kid that, like, filled out an application and then robbed the store. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you just put down your social security number, yeah, your address, address, everything. My references, so these are all the people I'd probably hide with. Like, right. Right. I think we'll uh, be able to find you. So the school falls apart. Of course. Um, just to be safe, they suspend everyone who is involved or who alibi the people involved. So Bradfield and then everybody who alibied him, so like everybody that was on that trip, oh my all God. get suspended. Damn. Now, granted, this is, they're suspended from teaching. But this um, is like June, aren't they out it of is, school? It is. They are out of school. Oh, okay. And so I guess that when they go back, like they just said, okay, you know, you're suspended. So when we go back to school... Unless this is cleared up. Like, you're not, you're you're not, not. teaching this okay. year. So, these rumors start. Mm-hmm. And things start to come out. And, of course, some of it is exaggerated and sort of small-town gossip. And then some of it is true. Right. 
Uh, so the rumors are that the teachers are all having like swinger parties <laughs> and they're in devil worshiping cults. That's a good one. Yeah. And I can tell you as, as a teacher that we totally do those things all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one coming up this weekend. The devil worshiping cult or a swinger party? We like to combine them. Oh. So like in one all room. All sides of the dark sided matter. Yeah. Yeah. In one room you're like Two flipping birds a coin stone. and then picking a partner and then in the other room you're. It's a sacrifice. Word sacrifice. So you could flip the coin and like either yeah. pick the partner or sacrifice them. That's how you pick the the kids to sacrifice. Is your oh teaching. oh that's right that's right we do sacrifice yeah. the children. See yeah it totally makes sense. Yeah absolutely. Well, small town gossip my ass. So yeah no it's total truth. If they just got found out. So sorry suckers. The there was an anonymous caller who called the cops and claimed that Smith the principal chopped up bodies and burned them in the school's incinerator. <laughs> so getting a little bit out of hand. And yeah. then somebody painted the school. They painted Satan's place all over the wall of the school. <laughs> Did they Which, use red? I don't know. Uh, but again, that? accurate. I don't know what the problem is. Yeah, and it's all of your shitty ass children that make this Satan's place. So well, in so this much. case, it may actually be the adults. <laughs> well, adults. maybe, but normally it's normally, the kids. Normally it is. So it's, things sort of calmed down as far as the investigation they're pretty sure that smith was involved at this point no one's worried about where the children are they never find the children they don't mention them or anything like Um, are they looking or yeah but they just don't they just don't find them they don't find any evidence of them they don't find any bodies how scary yeah i think that scares me more than any other crime is when like literally people can just disappear yeah (sighs) they did conclude that it's very, very probable that the children are dead. Oh, well, yeah. Um, especially at this point, they're definitely, almost definitely dead. But even at the time, they don't think that they, they like, kidnapped them and gave them to somebody else or sold them into some horrible, Oh, like, okay. I don't know. Um, they, they're pretty sure that they were also murdered, but just their bodies were placed somewhere else. Ew. So, Bradfield, the fiancé, mm-hmm. who was spending... His summer in New Mexico hmm. with another girlfriend. On the insurance check, I'm sure. Well, that's when he tries to cash the life insurance check. Oh, my God. And that brings everything back into focus. Reinhardt's ex-husband and her brother try to fight against Bradfield to say, you know, you can't cash this insurance check. Like, that's just not not cool. And the insurance companies try to fight against him to say, you know, this money is not yours. Like, you had a hand in the murder, so you can't. And it just brings everything back into court, and that's when things really start coming to light. Yeah. So they try and convict both Bradfield and Smith of all three murders. Wow. The children and the mom. During the trial, more information comes out about Bradfield and his life. And it turns out... Mm. He's engaged to Reinhardt and had told her they were going to Europe to get married that summer. However, he lives with his girlfriend, uh, okay. which somehow she didn't know. And Girl. he had already made plans to spend his entire summer in New Mexico with another girlfriend. So three women are involved. Three. And not only that, but to me, and they didn't really say this, but it really sounds like if I if I tell you we're going to Europe next month to get married, but I have already told you know Mandy that I'm going to her house all summer long. Like, I know you're not going to be in the picture when it comes time to go to Europe. Otherwise, yeah. that's going to create a conflict. Yeah. So it sounds to me like he knew well in advance that she well, wasn't going to be mm-hmm. part of this. Dang, this guy's wow. nuts. He claimed during his trial that he had been worried that Smith might kill Reinhardt. Like, that was his fear that oh the God. principal might be planning to kill his fiance. but he didn't ever bother to tell anyone, even the fiance. He apparently <laughs> just had this concern. I'm sorry, if I had a concern that someone it. was trying to kill you, Aaron, I think the first thing I would do is call the police. And yeah. then I'd call you. Yeah. Because the police should be, like, aware so they can do their part to protect you. Right. But also... Depends on how imminent the threat is. I might appreciate it if you call me first. Well, yeah. I mean, like, if I see them outside and I'm outside, like, I'm not going to be like, okay, let me call the police right. first. I'll call you and be like, go hide. <laughs> like, give yourself some time. Right. Grab a knife. Run. Go hide. 
Uh, yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You're I'm not just gonna keep it to yourself until after I'm dead, dead no. naked, and then I'll say, in my own car. "No, I knew it the whole time. He was gonna kill her. <laughs> right? I just, I swear, I knew I was it. Expecting this. Yeah, that was the plan. Oops. Oops. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I had this feeling back when we were text mess. Oh no, wait. Uh, <laughs> that's a different. That's different. So Smith is also convicted of all three murders. Um, but then he his conviction gets overturned on a technicality. So he doesn't have to go to jail for the murders. I, I believe he still ended up going to jail and serving time for the robbery that he committed. Okay. But it wasn't very much time. Bradfield dies in jail. Smith dies at home. In Bradfield's jail cell, they find a photo after he's dead. So this is, um, oh, I didn't write down how long it was, but it's years and years and years later. Mm -hmm. So he, after he, like, dies of old age, they find a photo of an unmarked grave. And for whatever reason, they are convinced, like, this is where the children are buried, that he's... He's oh. taken them to this. It's like a, there's a picture of it. I'll, I'll try to post it if I can find it again. But it's like an angel. Yeah. And it's just a photograph of like an angel and like a statue. Mm -hmm. And so they figured that he went to wherever this place was and buried the children. Uh -huh. But they didn't have any more information about where in the so world it could anywhere. be. Right. So they never found it. Oh my God. So they never found any bodies or anything. But they were pretty sure that's where they were. Dang. And that... What was the technicality that, that What's-His-Face got off It of? was just like a... It's like something stupid. Yeah. Like, they didn't Mirandize him properly, or they Ugh. didn't... The evidence wasn't... It was just a, a court technicality. All right, now I'm mad at the cops. <laughs> well, good. Equal uh, opportunity anger tonight. Yes. I am just amazed with the the whole girlfriend situation. Yeah, it's like, well, I'm just gonna, okay, you wait over here, and then you wait over there, and the girlfriend that he lived with didn't know that he was engaged. And planning to spend this summer with another girlfriend. Where did yeah. she think he was all summer? Yeah. Because you don't work the summers, buddy. You're a no. teacher. Right. Oh Even God. if you did, you don't work them in New Mexico when you have been suspended. Yeah. So. I mean, it's a pretty good it's sort of strangers on a train esque. Do you know that story? Mm, kind of where like just two strangers meet and they agree to kill for each other because neither of them would be a suspect because oh, they don't know each other. Yeah. They have no connection to the person they're killing. Mm. Um and it's sort of like that except that I mean these two obviously had a connection that was obvious enough that they put it together. These are like colleagues on a bus. Like, yes. They're not <laughs> a school bus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, they're not that high tech to where they can successfully pull this off. But on the other hand, they kind of are. Right. They kind of both pulled it off. Well, I right. Mean, in a way, they, but like nothing was they ever get caught. But it was it wasn't a terrible plan. Yeah. It sounds to me like Bradfield did Smith a favor by lying in his trial, which didn't end up working out, but he did the favor. He tried. And Smith did Bradfield a favor by killing the fiancé so that he could have the money. Yeah. And Which he never even got anyways. Simplified his life. He never got. Yeah. He never, which is good. Because that was Which is just... weird. Oh, that's so weird. I'm still shocked by the amount of money. Like, I know how much life insurance policies normally cost people. Well, yeah, but I think he took it out on her because he knew he was going to kill her. And he wanted a oh. chunk of money. That's a lot of money. Or he knew that she was going to die and that he wasn't going to kill her and thought he'd be able to collect. Yeah. But I'm just saying. That premium... Oh, no, I'm sure it was, especially for teachers, they're both teachers. Yeah. They're not making any money. I don't know. In the 70s. Maybe. Maybe they're getting, I, I feel like since I started working, I get paid less and less every year. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So the request when we talked about, when Michelle and I talked about this crime was that, you know, teachers get a lot of bad press and let's not uh -huh. come up with something that gives teachers more bad press. So, um, I don't know that I necessarily <laughs> met that no, requirement. No. However, these people were just psychopaths. Yeah. And they happened to, to be, be teachers. teachers. It like, wasn't... Right. Teaching didn't drive them to do it, like you no, said. No. No. This was already in play. Mm-hmm. So that's my story. Do you have an interesting story? I do. And, uh, breaks my little heart. Oh, no. Well, kind of. But, like, 
Also, I kind of heard about this at one point, and then it, reading it, it kind of, like, jogged my memory about it. Uh -huh. And then Mike was asking me, like, oh, do you have your story picked? And I said, I do, and I was telling him about it. He was like, right, right, right. And, like, he remembered it. So I was like, oh, my God, this must have, like, really been in the news, and I wasn't, like, wasn't paying any attention. Well, I mean, like, I thought I had heard of it, but I was like, sometimes my brain plays that trick on me, like, oh, yeah, you've totally heard of this before, and then I'm like, right. wait, no, I really haven't. Right. But then this was actually real. So, this happened in November of 2001, which that's why I was kind of like, I probably could have remembered this, mm -hmm. but I was I was already graduated old. from high school at that point. You were what? Mm. Kindergarten. No, I was not. <laughs> Extremely offended. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> so, this is a story. Uh, I don't know why I was about to start rapping Fresh Prince. Anywho. <laughs> this is about Chris, well, Christopher Pratt. Just kidding. Not Pratt. Why is he on my mind? Because I just watched that movie. <laughs> I was going to say, it is? Oh my Wait, god. I didn't hear this That would be horrible. No, we just watched Passengers today. Oh, and I looked okay. down and in my head, I was like, Pratt. And I'm like, not the right Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris. I talk to him like I know him. Sorry, Chris. Won't what? happen again. So this is actually... <laughs> Passengers is a really good movie. Side note. Oh, I wanted to see it. Oh, it was really good. What did you... Where did... How did... I bought it. <laughs> okay. And I watched it. Okay. <laughs> so I own it. You could borrow it. <laughs> did you buy the Blu-ray? I... Well, it comes with, like, with both. The digital... Have, yeah, I think it has... Because we... We have 4K player in the media room, right. so we have that. And then the second disc is the is the media Blu -ray. room the red one that's in just an entire room of couch. Yes. Okay, so this room at her house, I'm gonna convince her <laughs> that we don't need to be podcasting in the podcast room. We could podcast. We in need there. to podcast in cushion. the media room. It is seriously, it's an entire room. They painted it red. They have yeah. a cinema sign outside. We and plug then, it in when we watch movies. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that's like our favorite thing to do. It has a giant. TV and it has the biggest sectional sofa ever yeah. with two giant ottomans so literally mm -hmm. you walk in the door and the entire room is a couch yeah. like we picked the colors for the couch and the pillows well actually Mike did a really big part he's he has like an eye he's really yeah. good so we did the red pillows for the red wall and it matched perfectly excellent we didn't pick either of the things at the same time that's funny. it was great but we can podcast in there well, I, I don't know if it would be, like, That's the room that Emily, quality, but... like, falls asleep in. Every yeah. time she comes hang out, if we go in there, she falls asleep. Everybody does. I just, I don't know how I feel about the fact that I have now been to your house one time, but apparently mm -hmm. my sister has, like, a room at your house. Uh, well, because she wants to move in, because as soon as I put the movie in, she was asleep. Yeah. And I was like, damn it. Oh, I would be, too. Yeah. I'd be out. But really... That's where Lindsay and Sarah sleep when they, like, sleep over. Because then they could just roll. That's just oh, couch. Oh, yeah. Right. We used to all cram into a futon when I was having sleepovers. Just like when we were in middle school and high school. We would all, it'd be like four or five of us on this mm -hmm. one little tiny futon. One time we would try to fit like four girls on one bed. Mm -hmm. Like, just kind of like feet one way, head the other. Like, yeah. Ugh, that was annoying. We just all snuggled. Yeah. I don't like feet in my face. Me neither. So. But, okay. Sorry, Chris Pratt, for calling you out. You're not a criminal. Back to... Chris Pittman. Guys, this is okay. a real criminal. So, he is from Chester County, South Carolina. I was all excited there for a second. And I know, right? <laughs> uh, let's see. He was actually convicted because he grabbed his dad's shotgun and walked into his grandparents' bedroom. That while sentence they were asleep. could have gone so many ways. <laughs> yep. Okay. Grabbed right. the shotgun, walked into the grandparents' room while they were asleep, and shot them both. Why? The worst part is, is that he was 12 when he did this. <gasps> oh my god. Yeah. Okay. Kid killers are beyond creepy to me. Yes. I don't know why. It doesn't, it doesn't, we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. It's because they're supposed to be innocent. Yeah, and it scares the kids. shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. So this one supposedly has a great reason, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So not only did he do that, so he shot and killed both his grandma and grandpa but he when also he was 12 when he was done with that he also set the house on fire and stole cash and weapons grabbed his grandpa's truck keys and took off in the truck uh 
at 12 okay. years old. He did all of this in one night. So, a 12-year-old is a 7th grader. Yes. I have had 7th graders. Mm-hmm. They bring me their teeth when they fall out Ew. so that I can keep them safe. Well, I don't keep them safe. I send them to the nurse for the rest of the block. But Ew. presumably so that I could keep them safe so they could put them under their pillows. Mm-hmm. One of them got very upset one year because his elf on the shelf went back to the North Pole yep. because he wanted to find out what would happen when you call 911. <laughs> oh, I remember that. <laughs> they came to his oh, house. I remember that. He got in a lot of trouble. I mean, not all 7th graders are like that. Some of them are, like, extremely grown up. Mm -hmm. But even so, I don't think any 7th graders I've taught would be able to do that kind of that planning. Much. Mm-hmm. So we get to the planning part. That was a big part in the trial. So most of this article was about the trial, but that's where all the interesting stuff happened. So that's pretty much what he did all in one night. So the trial was 11 days. Like, Yeah. That, that that's nothing. I was like, okay. So um, he was the trial was fourteen years. Yeah. <laughs> um, nobody wanted to convict a child. Yep. So eleven day trial, and he was tried as an adult because they at twelve at twelve, which makes him one of the young. Which is why my kid like he was like, yeah, I heard about this. Right. He's one of the youngest kids, kid criminals who was tried as an adult because of the amount of stuff. I mean, that if you did. add it up, it's murder, He, it's arson. arson, it's grand theft, it's probably grand larceny. Like, it's a lot behind him. It is, but at the same time, like, one of the things that we used to tell parents in teacher conferences all the time, which I'm sure all the people I worked with are still telling parents, at 12, your brain is in a different place. You're not yeah. a normal human being. You've so got that's, so much going on. Oh, yeah. That's pretty much what um, the defendant's argument was. I think so, that's a valid argument, even though this kid is terrible. Yeah. Well, they kind of get into that because there was, um, obviously, he could have got life in prison, yeah. but he actually didn't. He was only sentenced with 30 years in prison, which was the absolute minimum. So, it could have been jail for life, but yeah. I guess, um, the, let's see, the jury was 12 people. They right. totally rejected the idea of he didn't know right from wrong, because that's what they were, like, the angle they were trying to work, because he was on Zoloft. They rejected it because he was on Zoloft, or they tried well, to... Well, they were, because they were like, oh, he didn't know right from wrong because he's on this medication, and they were like... No, you know when you're killing your grandparents. You know when you're setting the house on right. fire. You know, like, you know, like, they broke it down that way. Not, oh, well, he was all in the mix and had a rage night. Like, they were like, no, that's not so what happens. the defense essentially tried to plead, like, what, temporary insanity? They, well, to an extent, because they didn't want to, like, kind of overstep. And then, I mean, I guess he could have ended up in, like, a padded room with a straight jacket. It sounds like that's where he needs to be. Well, yes. <laughs> so, they um they did bring up how Zoloff has um warning labels talking about when, you know, any medication in kids, you have to closely monitor it. Yeah. Always. Well, especially that age when they're about to hit puberty and they're growing Especially really Zoloft, fast which is, and... a, you know, obviously a strong medicine. Um, so it does have warning labels that it says it can increase violent tendencies or suicidal thoughts in children more than adults. Okay. So they were saying, okay, that's fine, but Zoloft isn't on trial. Because they kept attacking, like, oh, it's Zoloft's fault. Right. But they were like, no... No, the kid knew, had to have known what he was doing in that moment. And they had to, he had to plan that. Well, right. It's not you like don't he... don't just decide all in one night to do all of these bad things, right. including killing your grandparents. Right. <laughs> he didn't walk into a room, get in a fight, see a gun, and shoot somebody. Mm-hmm. He didn't, like... What'd they say? He didn't all of a sudden, like, snap. You know? Right. Like, it had right. to have been premeditated right. to an extent. So, um... They were like, you know, Zoloft is not on trial. That's not, that's not what it is. So they kind of stuck with, um, you know, this is just the child had a bad reaction to the medication that he was put on and it wasn't his fault. Which, if it wasn't his fault or was his fault, he still shouldn't have done this. So, well, that's, yes, that's yeah. true. So then 
they went on to say a 12 year old does not have the mental capacity to plan and execute a premeditated murder and at the same t- time understand his actions to be tried as an adult. Right. So I understand that to an extent, but back to you have to know to an extent that killing is wrong. Yeah. Shooting a gun at a person is wrong. Setting yes. a house on fire is wrong. Yes. Stealing cash and guns. And, and a car. And the car and taking off in the car. Right. Is wrong. Like, you know, I feel like your four-year-old knows that if he doesn't wear his seatbelt in the car, that that's wrong. <laughs> he does. He knows laws already and he's four. Right. <laughs> so, no, it's true. So. It's true. Now, if I could get him to not push his sister. Mm. He pulled her down the stairs today. Just like three stairs. And on to him. So they did fight for um, psychiatric help or rehab mm-hmm. and not to do jail time. Um, but they were like, mm, no. Right. So they told totally, that it's just... Everything sounded so cut and dry, and I'm sure it wasn't, because, yeah. I mean, I'm sure, as a jury, I would, one, I stress that one day I'm going to have to have jury duty, and it's going to be something so serious, I'm not going to be able to handle it. Right. And then I'm going to have to give them, like, some weird excuse to get out of it, being like, I am too anxious for this, I can't right. think. Like, I'll think that this guy's going to come and try to kill me for saying the wrong thing. Oh. Like, I can't. I was freaking out. So, I'm sure it wasn't as cut and dry as the article made it sound, but, um... So they went back to um, the age. Prosecutors totally were like, no, age is not a factor. He's, um, they kept painting him as this uh, diabolical kid, and they said that he had no regrets for human um, punish or for adult punishment. Then they would kept, they kept saying, which just is horrible, but I don't know why it made me laugh, that he was a, <laughs> wick, a wicked child. He's a wicked child. And He's I was evil. like, yeah. And I'm um, saying, what could be more evil than taking a shotgun to some 60-year-olds laying in bed asleep? And I was like, dang. So I even put, well, a lot could be worse than that, or more evil than that, but I hear what you're trying to right, say. But I understand the thought. I was like, well, I, a lot, but I hear you. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> can I ask a question? I don't know if you'll know the answer. Like, mm-hmm. what the hell? Why? Why? Oh, I do have that answer. Okay. So, that's the next page. I just, Uh, (laughs) I want to hear that he was horribly abused and that his grandparents were evil and that, because otherwise, ugh, I don't know, this whole thing creeps me out. it kind of goes back to, they tried to, again, to make it temporary insanity because of the Zoloft, and they said that, um, like, his lawyer stated that he is 90 pounds and 12 years old with a mind that was chemically altered because of the drugs. Yes. But but the drugs were there is, to keep him from doing that kind of shit. This is exactly, <laughs> I swear to you, I was at work and I was reading this, and I told Pam... She doesn't do this while she's at work. That's not what she's well, saying. Well, no, I was trying to find a good article. I don't care. Oh. I was trying to find a good article. <laughs> Everyone has their, like, Facebook downtime or whatever. I was looking up the article, and I said this to Pam, and we were cracking up because there's a quote in um, Legally Blonde when she was just like... Um, she exercises, which gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. And happy people just don't shoot their husband. <laughs> and that's what right. I was thinking. I was like, he's right. taking Zoloft Zola for his depression. Makes you happy. So, yeah, to make you happy. Happy people just don't kill their grandparents. Right. So I was like, okay, I understand. But it was only prescribed two weeks prior to the shooting. So oh. it probably was in that rough, that is a regulated rough, yeah. time. So, they noticed that he was getting more aggravated and um, just, like, wired. So, they went back to the doc. Uh, I put doc, but doctor, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> and increased the dosage. Didn't do anything. He just increased it. Right. So, I understand that to a point, but he probably wasn't even regulated to that dose. And then right. he upped it again, which probably did send him into a little bit of a frenzy. Yeah. As far as, like, he was pro- his mind was probably chemically altered. You know? Oh, like, I'm so torn about this case. I know, I know. I'm it really just, glad I wasn't... Ugh, it gets worse. Okay. Oh, great. Well, not worse, but kind of. Um, So, their plea was that... um, Or not plea. I guess it's really the prosecutor was like, well, no, he was kind of a bad kid before the medication. So, what does that matter? Right. So, that was kind of their fight. Well, it come to find out that he grew up with his father after his mother left and they were lived in central florida everything's in florida <laughs> um and 
then he ran away from home and at one point tried to commit suicide. And then he went to a psychiatric hospital. So he's already been to one. Right. And this is all before 12 because this is, you know, kind of what led him. So after that, that's what led him to live with his dad's parents, so his grandparents, in South Carolina. Oh, so he wasn't living with dad. Well, he was, but then... But they were all living together. Or all living near each other? I think that the father was involved, but I don't think that they, I don't think that he lived there. Because he was living with him after the mom left, and he ran away and tried to commit suicide and whatever. So then they put him gotcha. with the grandparents. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So okay. I think that's kind of what led him to the father say, like, I can't do this. He needs two people in charge or right. maybe, you know, more supervision. So he went and lived with them. Um, but the day before the shooting um, he was in a fight on the school bus, and it was with a second grader, and he was 12. So a second grader's yeah, how old? like, seven or eight. Seven or eight? Yeah. yeah. So, and he tried to choke the second grader. And then when he got home, he got yelled at, or, you know, they confirmed that he was punished and, like, verbally abused, I'm sure. Um, and they said he was most likely paddled, because that's what the grandparents did. So they think that that might have been the motive. So then he was like, well, I'm just going to kill you in the middle of the night with this stolen shotgun. Yep. Steal all your stuff. I literally put star motive. Like, I can figure right. this out. So um, he is, like, I well, I mentioned that he was only one of the only uh, child cases tried as an adult, which is kind of crazy that everyone else got it. I feel like so easy compared to, like, a select few kids I kind of want to find yeah. one that, like, did something almost as bad as this or just as bad as a child. Yep. So, um, they kind of fought back and forth that, well, no, he was a bad kid before the drugs, or no, he had a drug-altered mind, but then that's when they decided that he was a bad kid, and he got 30 years, so he stayed in a juvenile detention center until he was 17. Right. And then transferred. Um, Big boy jail. Yeah. Big boy prison. So, he will be in there. He will get released in our lifetime. Yeah. So, it'll be Not like that long. 2033 well, or 34. But Depending no. on when. You don't serve... My computer's super happy tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't serve... Well, at least in Virginia. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I would assume this is a federal case. Um, maybe. No, I don't think so. No? No. Um, well, so at least in Virginia, you serve 85% of whatever time you're given. Yeah. So, like, if I sentence you to 10 years, the most you'll serve is eight and a half. Yeah. And then you can have it lessened for other things Things. as well. Like, going to prison automatically Mm -hmm. takes days off. So, when you're in a jail... Yeah. You don't get... Because he's only in a correction facility. So, it doesn't say prison. He's probably... I would imagine he's in prison. Yeah. It might be, like, a super low yeah. security, whatever, but... I know, I just, like, shit. He went through a lot right. before he was even a teenager. Right. And he went down with a... With and a when he does get out, yeah. he will never have a healthy life. Mm-mm. There's no way. No. He missed out on everything. He can't possibly get a diploma. The best he can do is a GED. Mm-hmm. Assuming that they got all of his mental stuff taken care of and he was motivated enough to do that. Yeah. He, he's been in prison for more than he's not been. Yeah. I'm sure none of his family wants, wants to talk to him. Well, he didn't have hardly anybody to begin with and the only people yeah. that were doing any care for him. He killed. He killed them. mm mm-hmm. uh, That's just, uh, I'm going to post the picture, which this is okay, because I'm going to post it before this episode airs, of him with his grandparents, because you would never guess in the picture that he was the criminal. But um, then there's another picture of him after, they kind of did before and after Zoloft, like, making it, like, a big thing. Right. But you can definitely tell that, like, which one, he's in that puberty stage, too. Oh, yeah. So, Every 12-year-old boy looks evil. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, there's a really nice one that's, like, the 11-year-old, you know? And then the yeah. 12-year-old that's, like, all rude and mean. Right. So, I'll post some of those. I'll make Christmas a of your 7th grade year. That's when you turn evil. Christmas. Christmas of your 7th grade year. They leave mm-hmm. for the winter break, and you still like them. 
and get a little about. annoyed. They come back. Now they're eighth graders, and you just gotta be done. You're just done. Mm-hmm. Ugh. I did not like seventh grade. I apparently really did because I taught it for ten years. <laughs> yeah. I actually really, really liked teaching it. It was a very interesting challenge, and if it wasn't for all the, like, crap that teachers, Mm -hmm. I would still be doing that. That, that, I, okay, so we could spend ten podcast episodes discussing that case, I feel like. Oh, yeah. I have so many thoughts and opinions, and, and I don't really know where I stand on any of it. What are you doing? (laughs) Documenting all the animals. (laughs) (laughs) She gets her phone out, and then all of a sudden the phone is in my face, and the phone is in the cat's face. <laughs> we are covered in animals. I just need to just... I'll, I'll post this somewhere. Um, Only if, like... I, I've been rubbing my eyes. I've probably got makeup everywhere. I'm not in it, right? You are just a little bit, but it's not that bad, I promise. With my drink, which, by the way, is nasty. Well, yeah, I said that at the very beginning. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you not hear me? I wanted it to be good in the first couple of sips I took, it was good, and then... No. It's not. actually really... It sort of tastes like vomit. My drink was probably better. No, yours was white chocolate. There's nothing good about that. You don't like white chocolate? No. I only like it if it's in, like, the coffee drink. Like, I don't like just eating white chocolate, but I like the taste, because it's like the, the white mocha, whatever. Right. Um, in the coffee, it tastes good. It's just, like, it, just it tastes different. Out. Like, plain white chocolate, I cannot bite into a piece of white mm-hmm. chocolate. Because it's not chocolate, once. It's, it's like eating Crisco or something. Well, yeah. It's not chocolate. Mm-hmm. There's no way. So, in the coffee drink, it's just like a sweetener almost. Right. But with the raspberry, that's why it tastes like a piece of cake. The raspberry sounds great. I would want it in, like, dark chocolate. I mean, yeah, you could do that, too. Right. But... The white chocolate is where it's at for this one. I was going to ask you to bring me coffee, but I was then going to have to order decaf, and that felt really, really lame. So I was like, no, I'll just make myself Sometimes a drink. I just, I just want decaf so I can eat biscotti as like a, like a little Did you ever snack. get your biscotti? <sighs> you have no idea. No. I went there like every day. No, I got it. Don't you forget Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> but I went there like every day, and I was like, I literally wanted to write a note and be like, please restock this. I swear I buy it once a week. You have a repeat customer. Right. Don't Just... buy the cranberry pistachio because it tastes like bullshit. And Thank nobody, you. nobody Love you. eats Goodbye. it. It's always there. It's always there. And I'm like, guys, that should like click to you that, oh, we're always out of the almond. Maybe we should order more of the almond. All right, Erin, do you have a short story I for us? I do. I have a great short story for I'm us. excited because you kind of started telling me about it, but then I didn't get to hear it. Yes. But I got excited. Okay, so I'm reading this, and the first site I read it on only told it from one point of view. Okay. And the second site elaborated on it more. And so I'm going to tell it to you kind of like the first site did, because that's the really exciting, like, haunted house, super creepy (laughs) kind of thing. Okay. Um, But then I will correct it and tell you the the real story. Okay. So this is called The Watcher House. Do you know about The Watcher House? I don't know why, but I feel like I do, and I'm going to really creep myself out. It's Westfield, New Jersey. Wait. Can I say some of it, and if it's right, just, like, cut me off so Uh I can tell. Is this about, like... There's a family who watches this the house, and they pass it down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead, tell me. Okay, so this is 2015 when all of this comes okay. to light, so it's it's really recent. Mm-hmm. And actually, uh, maybe still in court. We'll get to that later. It's a little bit iffy. Okay. So, Westfield, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. So, I picked one that was <laughs> your home state. Yay! Um, how about this? Okay. So, this family of five, mm-hmm. Derek and Maria Broadus, um, buy a house. A $1.3 million gorgeous house. So, I just have that laying around. Right. Especially a family of five. They've yeah. got three kids, but that, you know, whatever. And three days after they buy the house, they start getting notes in their mailbox. Which is a federal offense, everybody. Yeah. Um, And these notes are really, really creepy. And and they're definitely written to be creepy. Yeah. One of them, one of the first ones says, My grandfather watched this house in the 1920s, and my father watched in the 1960s. It is now my time. Ew. 
and then it says all of the windows and doors in 657 Boulevard, which is the address of the house, allow me to watch you and track you as you move through the house. Ew. Ew. Um, have they found what's in the walls yet? They soon will. Yeah. And I'd be like, unless it's money, I don't want it. Right. <laughs> no, Whatever it is, no. <laughs> I, I feel like at that point I'd have people coming in and like x-raying the walls or oh, yeah. a cadaver dog or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then another note said, so those are all from different notes. Another one said of the previous owners that it was their time to move on and they kindly sold it when I asked them to. So this note writer, whoever it is, basically claims to kind of own the neighborhood, like control the neighborhood. Like he's not saying, oh, I own the house, get out. But he's like, this is my domain. I make the rules. I do whatever. It's been passed down in my family and this is what we do. And... Um, you know, he can tell people when to move and all this kind of stuff. He leaves notes about the young blood that, did you, did you fill the house with the young blood like I requested? What is it? What are their names? Like talking about their children. Ew. And then at one point he, um, says, you know, now that I know your names, I, I'm so happy or I can watch you more whatever. All these super, super creepy notes. Yeah. So <clears throat> the police had no leads the couple and their decide that they can't move their family into this house because it's not safe. No. And that they need to, that they, now they can't sell it because yeah. if they were to sell it to someone else, they'd have to disclose that it's not safe. And so they sue the previous owners because the note writer definitely says, I told them That's to sell it. Moves. So they yeah. must have known, right? That this guy was watching the house. And so they sue them for, and as I heard two different things. One of them said over and over three times what they paid for it. Dang. So $3.9 million. Yeah. Uh, another one said it was for the cost of the house, but they also wanted to still own the house. Okay. So I think it, it maybe they didn't just ask for a cash amount, but like it totaled up to the settlement. They also talked about how they had apparently done all of these renovations mm. to the house. So it was worth more. And so now it's worth more, and they put all this money into it, but they can't live there and they can't sell it, so, God. you know, they're suing. Um, this is... So that was that was the first site mm-hmm. that I read, and it so creepy. Yeah. Um, the second one made it a little bit more clear what's probably going on, which... It said, you know, the police have no leads. For whatever reason, paperwork for the lawsuit hasn't been finished being filed. Like, the couple that's suing the other couple hasn't followed through with their lawsuit. Which, if this was happening for real and you were super desperate to get some sort of, like, to move. Unless they're being threatened. Well, okay, that's yeah. that's a possibility. I'm always thinking. Um, <laughs> the letters have never been made public, and some reporters called the police, and the police wouldn't even confirm that they had them. Like, they wouldn't say one way or another whether or not the letters hmm. existed. And some of it's a little bit strange, like... Um, the the Broadduses said, well, we know that the previous couple got a letter on this date. Oh, uh, okay. And so it was like, well, how, I mean, unless that's maybe included in one of your letters, like, how would you know how? what date they got it on? Like, that mm-hmm. just seems a little bit fishy. So they did hire a PR firm to kind of take over to, like, address everybody for them so that they didn't have to talk to the media. And it was a big name. And they, you know, filed the first part of this lawsuit and they made it public. And then they kind of started doing weird things like they refused to answer questions to the press, even though the PR firm that they hire generally advises their clients to just be honest and tell the truth quickly and then leave. But these guys are just refusing to say anything at all. So they're very sketchy and suspicious. And it kind of looks like we bought this house and either we can't afford it or we don't want it. And so we came up with a plot to get it, to get you know, it. to get the house or to get our money back or whatever. Yeah. And the previous couple were interviewed too. And they were like, yeah, we grew up, like one of them had grown up there. We raised our kids there. Like this is, 
that's not true. That's that's oh. just bizarre to think that anybody would think that that was a thing. And here I am, the conspiracy theorist, being like, no, they're threatened. They're paid off to leave because he said, you need to leave now. And they were yeah. like, okay, we'll go. Right. And now they're like, no, what are we talking about? Right, right. <laughs> I mean, it would be absolutely fascinating, like, if they actually someday caught someone. Yeah. And, and I actually think it would make a really great story. I always think some of these crimes, like, they would make really great novels. I would totally read that novel. That would be a really good, scary movie. Yeah. Where there's this secret family that, I don't know, lives in a, a building that looks like it's abandoned, mm-hmm. and they watch the neighborhood and, like the neighborhood's, like, the chess oh, pieces. Oh, no. If this was a movie, it would be, like, someone in the public eye that no one would ever think. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because then there's always that big plot twist at the end. It's like, oh, it was the mailman all along. That's why he <laughs> thought it was okay to put them in the mailbox. Like, right. something Right. It is crazy. okay for yeah. him to do it. So, the Watcher House. So, the other thing about the Watcher House is the story that I have tentatively picked out for next week is kind of related to okay. this story. Um, mostly just in a, it took place around the same time and really, really close by. But I thought that was neat. There's like a connection between the two of them. Okay. Well, I'm excited to hear that one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but definitely rate and review us so that you can end up on our episode in a good way. I'll I think they're scamming. I'll solve this case. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How are you going on the Parkway Killer? Ugh, I was on there today and I was like, I know he did it. I was sitting here, like, <laughs> looking around, and then I actually had an idea that maybe I should mm-hmm. hire a psychic to come and read the ground where the murders happened to see if they can pick up anything. I wonder if that's been done. I don't know. Because I went and saw a psychic. Well, I don't know if he's a psychic, but something like he's a medium or whatever you want to call it. Okay who worked for the police force for 30 years using really? his stuff, and he never, like, he always solved the case using his... His whatever. Talent, I guess you'd say. Right. To the point where, like, the first time he, it, like, clicked with him that he had this, like, power, this lady called and said that there was, a, like, her house was broken into, yada yada, they go, they check it out, whatever, they didn't see anybody, they were like, oh, yeah, you're good to go back in. Well, as they were leaving, he was just like, there's a big, like, weight on him, like, making it hard for him to, like, even get in the car or whatever, telling him, you need to go check under the bed. And he was like, what are you, like, no respectable man (laughs) is going to be hiding under the bed. Right. Sure enough, he went, and he he said he pulled up the little doily bed skirt, skirt. because there's a little lady, and... He was standing there, or was sitting there, like, under the bed. Well, not sitting, laying down, I guess you would you'd be, like, Hopefully. squeezed in there. Right. Um, he was with a butcher's knife. The bed. Oh, my God. And he jumped on the bed, and he was like, oh, shit, he could stab right through. And he jumped off the bed, and he called for help. And they, you know, they flipped the bed, and they got him. And the woman was like, I was just going to go to bed, too. Thank you for coming back. Oh, my God. He said, since that day, he trusted every feeling he had. And he said, and the more he did trust it, the more it got stronger and more specific. Interesting. Right? So I, I still am completely skeptical of all of that, but I do think that people have intuition and, like, pick up on things they don't realize they pick up on. He, and well, he talked about that. that he said that you have to, that he knows people who have gotten that type of, like, signs from the universe type yeah. thing by meditating to where it's gotten so strong that now they have that strong intuition to where, like, they know... Not right from wrong, but, you know, like, the right choice and everything. Right. So, like, he said that he's done that. Like, he's really, like, stressed about something, and he's like, I'm just gonna, you know, meditate on it. I'm just gonna calm myself down, kind of level myself out. And right. And then he got a really strong sign what to do. And, you know, it was kind of like, he's like, you just have I mean, to be more available sense. to see yeah. that. Clear your mind, mm-hmm. and then your mind has space to figure out whatever yeah. puzzle. That's like when you go to sleep and you have crazy dreams, but then you wake up and you've solved your problems. Yep. Although, the kind of dreams I've been having this week, Dolores Umbridge was my great aunt the other night. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope my dreams solve my problem, because I got a puppy in mine last night. What's next on our agenda? Well, now we get to say goodbye. Um, so Now we get to butcher this. 
Yes, you get to butcher this. <sighs> so, actually, what we need to do is remind people, too, that uh, we are right now kind of doing a a drive for iTunes reviews. Yeah. We're, like, trying to bribe you to go on iTunes and review us. And we have so many reviews right now, like, five. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> jump on the bandwagon while but you still that's can. that's enough to get our stars to show up so we have a perfect rating on iTunes. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you do that, what we want to do is give you a shout-out on our show. So go on iTunes. You can put whatever name you want us to say. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make Jordan read the names so that she can totally butcher, butcher all them. of them. <laughs> and although this week I don't really think there's anything on there that you can butcher. <laughs> oh, you just wait. Okay, I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> when you tweeted that I butcher everyone's names, I was at work and I was like, what a little shit. And I was like, <laughs> accurate, but what a little shit. I only tweeted it because you said it on the well, podcast. Well, that's true. Well, that's why I was like, what a little shit. And I was like, but accurate. Like, I can't fight her. <laughs> Leave us a, a review on iTunes. Yes, please. Also, um, we absolutely love it when people like talk to us on Instagram I know. and Twitter. It makes my whole day. Because I'll like I'll message her and I'll be like, check Instagram. Yes. <laughs> or like, oh my god, check Twitter. <laughs> my uh, supervisor followed our Instagram account this morning. Oh. And I thought, well, crap. She's going to think I post while I'm at work all the time because we both just log in to yeah. all the accounts and post. So I'm going to have to make that clear to her that I'm not, like, sitting in my office on Instagram all day long. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that she had followed. She Well, she just did this morning. Oh, okay. Although, I'm not 100% trying to go back and check the timestamp, but it might have been during work hours, so I might be over <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, so. let's see. Okay. So, thanks for listening to this week's Crime Crazy. We hope you enjoyed listening to us as much as we enjoy listening to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's really natural. <laughs> That's true. Um, if you like us, don't forget to tell a friend because, yet again, we do like talking to all of you guys. And when we get new followers, it's just as like, oh my god. Right. So I do sort of obsessively check like downloads, but also that I'm fascinated by the geography of oh, like yeah. where everybody is. Oh, yeah, you were telling me that. Um, apparently, shout out to Germany. Yes, we have some German Guten people Tag. who are like <laughs> <laughs> sorry downloading that like wrong. crazy. <laughs> I can only imagine it's because of the Carl Tanzler. I think it is. That's what I said. I was like, no, no, it's that. But whichever, it's like a quarter of our downloads Wait, have come one, from Germany. Was he the cannibal one? Carl oh no no no! Yeah, no. that's right. Carl Tanzler was down in Florida. Florida. Uh, 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 Mivis. My yeah yeah. I was like, what is his name? What is his name? I could see how he spells it, but I'm like, right. I but how do you say it? it? Right. Yeah. I mean, Mivis. Yes. So, um, yeah, that's like a quarter of our downloads was yeah. Germany. Okay. I've never well, been to Germany. <laughs> me neither. Okay. Any of our German followers, listeners, whatever, you should give us a shout out so we could talk to you. So we could be like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so follow us. We're on Instagram, which is Crime Crazy Pod. Right. Also, Twitter is at Crime Crazy Pod. Yep. And then Facebook page and group. So whichever one you find, you can find the opposite there. <laughs> right. The group is fun. We just like post what you know silly stuff in there. Um, mm-hmm. There's a picture today. Did you see where Amanda had posted the picture of oh, her yes. room? Oh yes, that was <laughs> she, scary. So you should go on the Facebook group and see this picture that my friend posted of her hotel bathroom. Oh yeah. Uh, because. I don't know what the decorators were thinking, but it just seems to me to be a really, really terrible idea. Yeah, I agree with that one. You do have to get approved to be in the group, but between the two of us, you'll be approved within like 15 seconds. Oh, yeah. It pops right up, so you're good to go. Right. Um, But before we go, we do have some uh, shout outs for listeners who did rate and review us. Yes. We like iTunes ratings and reviews. You can also rate and review and comment and all of that, like on Podbean and some other podcasting apps, and that's great. Yes. If you do that and you would like a shout-out, just send us a PM or a DM and just 
screenshot. Yeah. Let us know. Because I think the only one we're really actively checking is iTunes at the moment. Yeah. I was say, because I know a few um, DM'd us on Twitter and said, yes. hey, I left your review. And they take a little bit to pop up. But it does. We it do check it. And then within a week's time, we can always check it. And then you might be on next week's. That's right. In a good way, not a bad way. <laughs> right. Because that is the rule with this podcast, yes. is you are not to be on there as one of the stories. Yes. So, um, do you want me to read all the shout-outs this week, or do you want to read some? Yeah, although I have a couple of comments about them, but go ahead. So, these are are people who left us great reviews. Yes. So, Make Me a Fan, which was one who actually DM'd us and said, hey, I left your review. So, we were watching for it. Yes. And so, they are a podcast. Yeah. Uh, It started out as just one guy. It's now him and his brother, I believe. It, they have the neatest idea for a podcast. Mm. Like, I wish I had thought of this first. Mm. So what they do, have I told you about this? Mm-mm. Is uh, the one guy, he wants people to make him a fan of the thing they're obsessed oh, about. Oh, you did tell me about this. Yeah, so they come on and they, like, explain their obsession and try to get yep. him to like it. It's a really that neat idea. That was me and Mike with you and... Oh, the whole power just went out. <laughs> are we pitch. still on? Yes, we are because that's just a battery. I hate the dark. It is so dark. Oh okay. There, no! <laughs> dark sided. We're not it even. Can you imagine dry. if this had happened during the Ouija board episode? Stop it. I have the flashlight on, guys. I'm not stopping. Make right. me a fan. You're great. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Um. Catman Van Dan. Great name. Right. I'm not before. sure who you are. <laughs> I like it, though. Right. And then, shout out to my sister, Danielle, because she always asks about it, and she's always like, when is the next one coming out? So she's always very excited. Oh, my favorite. We got a review from Deborah Messing herself, <laughs> <laughs> a.k.a. my best friend, Sarah Vernon, <laughs> who was just pretending... So, Sarah, we understand that you wish you were Deborah Messing, and we love you, but we also wish that you were really Deborah <laughs> Messing, leaving us a review. Academy Award winner. That's right. And then uh, Amanda Mighton, which, shout out, that's our West Coast listener. <laughs> yes. That's that's all of our downloads in Washington. Yeah. And then our number one fan, last but definitely not least, Aaron's mom. <laughs> Peg Pool. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. But, guys, this means that we need more people we don't know so we can get to know you. Absolutely. And either, A, follow your podcast or website or Instagram or Twitter so we know what you guys are into. And then maybe we can get uh, some ideas from you guys. Yes. Because that would be cool. Well, yeah, and I absolutely like Michelle giving us the idea. Oh, um, yeah. And actually, my mom was texting me today, and she's like, well, you should do something on this. And I was like, no, go put it in the Facebook group. Yeah, <laughs> my I'm mom, taking it over time. I know. My mom does the same thing, and then um, my sister did the same thing, too. She actually gave me a few ideas. I'm trying to, like, find good stuff about what they gave me. Right. But right. some of the things it's hard to find information something on because to do it did. It justice. Oh, yeah. I'll say, because, like, with time, I feel like some things were lost. So I'm like, oh, yeah. So I was like, I'm, there's not enough information for this to sound good. So it might be like a good little snippet short story. Right. But Zoe's crying because it's dark. Um, I'm crying because it's dark. It's so dark. I, I love, though, actually there are quite a few lights on. Not enough to make it light. But the iPad is lit up. The, the computer. laptops. <laughs> everything battery operated in here is still lit And up. my phone flashlight because that's how I'm reading the notes. <laughs> <laughs> So we're just sitting in the dark with the phone flashlight. I'm so glad we don't normally podcast in the pitch black silence. Um, no. That would freak me out. But, um, I think, I think that's it. That's the end of our, end of our shout outs. Oops. Um, also guys, definitely, uh, get in touch with us, especially if you have a podcast. We are into all kinds. I mean, we do a true crime podcast, so obviously we're into that. Yeah. But we listen to all kinds of things, and I love it when someone will, like, Friend or uh, follow us on Twitter and then, you know, send us the name of their blog or their podcast or whatever. Yeah, else. I know. I like doing that too. Well, so get in touch. Yes, please. Have a great week. And please don't end up on next week's episode in a bad way. Bye.